Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another of uh, the series from Dermoscopy Made Simple website. Today we're going to talk about adnexal tumours and foreign bodies. First thing is that most adnexal tumours are derived from hair follicles, but uh, others can come from eccrine sweat uh, ducts or apocrine glands. And usually you think about an adnexal tumour where in three circumstances. First of all, if you've got white structureless. Secondly, if you've got blue structureless or blue-white structureless. And thirdly, if you've got vessels as uh, serpentine and lines branched. <coughs> so these are the three circumstances you're going to think about uh, adnexal tumours um, because they'll pick up the commonest of them. So let's look at uh, image one here. White structureless. Now, <clears throat> white structureless in this circumstance represents calcification in the dermis, and the tumor is a pilometric somma. Now, this is a tumor that you're generally going to see in young children rather than in adults, and it'll usually be in the cheek. It'll feel very hard like a hard inspissated cyst. Um, when you put the dermatoscope on it, you generally see either white structureless like this, or you may see a mixture of blue and white structureless. And we'll look at that in, uh, in a little minute. This particular uh, case, we can have a look at in the Dermoscopy Atlas. And <clears throat> it was submitted, in fact, by uh, Win Ling. Um, when sort of shows this uh, lesion here, this was on the back of the neck in this particular patient. This was how the lesion looked without much in the way of uh, pressure. And then when you put pressure on it and obliterate the vascular component, you'll see the white calcification. You generally get calcification within these tumors. That's why they're firm. That's why they're hard. And the degree of whiteness you're going to see, the degree of white structureless, is going to depend on the amount of calcification. Now, <clears throat> let's look at another one that's in fact a mixture of two. Now, this is a young lady with another cyst-like lesion on the face here. Um, she had been traumatizing this a little bit, so there was a little bit of blueness in this. Um, from hemorrhage within the area. But again, there's this white area here too. And this was due to ossification or calcification within the, uh, the cyst. So again, here we've got a mixture of blue structureless and white structureless in a pilomexic stroma. And this is the sort of age group where you'd expect to see it, a much younger person on the cheek. But of course, not all white structureless um, is going to be uh, a pilometric soma. Now this was a lesion on the lady's forehead. This was it here. It was quite firm. When you put the dermatoscope on it this time, you see two things. You'll see there's a background pallor to it, but you'll see these white clods stuck within it. Now, these white clods in this circumstance are much smaller than the ones you were seeing before. Uh, they're all very uniform as well. Certainly, they vary in size. And these are a type of milium cyst or a retention cyst in the epidermis um, of this particular tumor. And this is a trichoepithelioma. It's one of the commonest of the uh, facial tumors that you'll uh, you'll see. Again, it's derived from a hair follicle, milia-like cysts of keratin, and these are what form these white clods. Also here, you've got linear blanched vessels. Now remember we said white structureless, um, blue structureless, linear branch vessels are the things that make you think about nexal tumors. And if within it you see these white clods, then that should really make you think of a trichoepithelioma. You can also um, get serpentine branched vessels uh, in BCCs, obviously, as well. And occasionally, you can get some white clods in BCCs. This is just a close-up <coughs> of the last patient. 
Um, this was the lesion here, this was the dermoscopy, and this is the histology. And the major feature that you're going to see here are these strands of cells that uh, are surrounded by a collagen stroma. And these are some of the keratin cysts that you're going to see. Um, now certainly a lot of these are, are much more dermal rather than epidermal, as I said before. They do vary a fair bit uh, in size. The more superficial they are, the more they look like million cysts. Um, but they are quite deep, these, because they're derived from hair follicles, uh, these, these cysts. I wonder if we can just make that a little bit larger to have a look at that histology. There we go. Let's just have a look, <clears throat> a little look here. These are the strands of cells that I was talking about within this um, much pinker collagen stroma roundabout. But when you get these strands of cells um, within a, a, a collagen background like this, plus all these keratin-filled cysts, then you're looking at a trichoepithelioma. Okay, let's pop on to the next slide now. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> this was basically just another trichoepithelioma. Again, clinically, this is the lesion here. Um, not quite as white as the last one, but you can see the little white areas just round the outside here. And when you put the dermatoscope on it, then you'll see these various uh, milia type cysts opening up or keratin retention cysts within the dermis um, opening up with your dermatoscope. So what about the next one? Okay, <clears throat> now there's the clinical here, firm cyst-like lesion. Again, this could have been a pilometrixoma. Um, and the sort of white structureless area there, or even under the mathoscope, when you're sorry, when you're looking here, that white structureless area um, would support uh, a, a diagnosis of pilometrixoma, except you've got these white clods. Uh, let's make that just a touch bigger. There you go. You can see them in here. Within that, you've got these little white clods. Now, if you've got small white clods within a white structureless area, and you'll see here, look at these branched vessels, serpentine vessels here as well. Again, just by looking carefully and seeing these white milia uh, cysts, you know that this isn't going to be a pilometric zone because it doesn't have uh, little keratin cysts like this, and that this is going to be a trichoepithelioma. Now, <clears throat> we've dealt with white structureless. Let's look at sort of blue structureless. By the way, let me just go back to that last uh, slide again, because I wanted to go down here. White structureless can be a dermatofibroma, uh, a scar, or a morphic BCC. A, remember the dermatofibroma, the white structureless is in the middle, usually surrounded by lines reticular around the outside, and that's due to collagen. Scaromorphic BCC, again a lot of collagen, molluscum um, will give you white structureless. These are the molluscum bodies, the viral bodies will give you uh, white structures, but it won't feel all that firm. Um, an accessory nipple, sometimes that can give you a white structureless center. Then we've talked about adnexotumors, the trichoepithelioma, uh, the pilometric soma. So these are the things that can cause white structureless. Sorry, <clears throat> we were going on to talk about blue structures. There's the clinical lesion on this patient's lower eyelid. Um, now, this was a small hemangioma-like cyst clinically, but uh, when you put the dermatoscope on it, you've got these blue-gray structureless areas. Now, you would look at that and think, well, it may be uh, a blue nevus. It certainly looks blue enough for that. 
and this would be compatible with a balloon evus. Not quite perhaps as well defined as a balloon evus, but I don't think you can read too much into that. Now, blue-gray structureless can be seen with balloon evus, melanoma or melanoma metastasis, BCC, you know, really pigmented BCC can be uh, blue-gray structureless, foreign body, old hemorrhage, and some hemangiomas as well as what this lesion was, an apocrine hydros hydrocystoma. So it's a type of secretory cyst. Um, it's from an apocrine gland rather than an eggcrine. Eggcrine is a sweat gland. Apocrine gland is um, a different type of, of gland, like a sweat gland, only it puts out a different type of uh, substance, pheromone-based. So when it's blocked, it often has that bluish tinge to it. Not quite often as blue as this, but uh, it will be one of the things you'll think of when you're looking at blue-gray structureless. Blue nevus, melanoma, melanoma metastasis, BCC, foreign body, old hemorrhage, some hemangiomas, and this apocrine hydrocystoma, classically in this area round about the eyes. Here's another thing that's uh, a blue-gray Structureless. You look at that again, you'd be thinking about a blue nevus, so blue nevus, melanoma, BCC, pigmented BCC, some other agnexo uh, tumors, hemangioma, uh, old hemorrhage, apocrine hydrocystoma. This was in the scalp and it was occurring within um, a nevus sebaceous. This image is courtesy of Stelios Minus. And this is a trichoblastoma. And it's the fact that it's arising within this. Uh, nevus, sebaceous nevus. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger and take a look at that. <clears throat> Can't see it quite, but you'll notice this area has been, uh, it's a bare area, there's no hair in it, and it's been there since birth. It thickened a bit at puberty, and then this lesion developed recently, this bluish lesion within it. Um, and this is a thing called a trichoblastoma. It's uh, probably a preemptive form of basal cell skin cancer, pigmented basal cell skin cancer. It's one of the commonest tumors that you're going to see arising within a, a nevus sebaceous. And again, you can view this case in Dermoscopy Atlas uh, from Stelios. 30-year-old <coughs> year man, new lesion in his nevus sebaceous for the last three months. And the pathology was reported as a trichoblastoma. Sometimes they'll be reported as basal cell skin cancers. Um, as he says there, blue hum homogeneous area. Um, the benign variant of BCC is the most frequent benign tumor arising in a nevus sebaceous. And lastly, another cause of blue-gray structuralist or blue-white structuralist I've put here more, you could say that's grey around there. You know, looking at this again, you'd be thinking of, well, there it is. It's a cyst-like lesion on the face, feels firm. You might think that it's uh, a, a, a trichoepithelioma. You'd go looking to see if you can see any milium cysts. You might think it's a pilometric soma. You'd, and that would be the thing that I'd probably think of um, just looking at this picture. Um, but remember, blue-gray or blue-white structureless can be melanoma, melanoma metastasis, BCC, um, hemangioma, then old hemorrhage, and then foreign bodies. And this was the foreign body that came out of this. So just remember foreign body as a cause of blue-gray structureless or blue-white structureless as well. Okay, <clears throat> that's just a quick romp through some agnexal tumors, as I say, the pilometrixoma, the trichoepithelioma, the apocrine hydrocystoma, the trichoblastoma. These are the things you're going to see. And remember, foreign bodies as a cause of blue-white or blue-gray structureless um, as well. Remember the milia that you're going to see in the trichoepithelioma. And uh, there will be other agnexal tumors. I'll add them to here later. Um, that's all that uh, we're going to cover today. Thank you very much.